हमें आवाज ही नहीं आ रही है सॉरी सॉरी ओहो सॉरी इट वाज म्यूट सो आपने कहा क्यों नहीं पहले मैसेज कर लेते इट वाज म्यूट ओके एंड आई विल रिपीट दैट व्हाट आई हैव सेड आई हैव सेड दैट इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी डिस्कस्ड सम टेंपरेचर बेस्ड सेंसर्स एंड ट्रांसड्यूसर्स एंड ओके इज इट ओके नाउ यस सर ओके and in today's lecture we will discuss some one or two mainly magnetic transducers and the basic principle physical principle is sensing a magnetic field or wait or a change in magnetic field you can also use magnetic field to sense the electric field or some other field or a mechanical or a resistance resistance and different physical parameters the final aim is that uh, transducer that will convert that one energy into another energy magnetic energy into electrical energy or electrical energy into magnetic energy or simply a signal a magnetic signal will be converted into an electrical signal But an electrical signal will be converted into a magnetic signal. Wait, somebody is saying that I am unable to connect. Who is it? I don't know. There are different, like um, actually, magnetic sensors are used in everywhere. Asfa. Is it Asfa? Yes, sir. Yeah, it is. I think Ashwa. Okay, I think Pulwama has some problems, issues in the network. Maybe. Are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. So, sensing magnetic field, it is important. For example. it is used in modern electronic devices if you have seen these hard disks you are those uh, compact disk cds or dvds that means in general the memory devices magnetic memory device actually those are based on the principle of this sensing of this magnetic field the oldest one i will give you that there is a magnetic reed head in those audio cassette players this was the first one and these are some of the examples where it is used the sensing of the magnetic field is used actually a transducers are used which sense actually magnetic field and then after sensing they convert it is converted by some other uh, device or maybe by the same device into some output signal an audio and voltage an electric current or a resistance so it depends what we need actually what is need of the system there are different the different uh, magnetic transducers include for example based on physical principle involved physical principle involved we have lot of are there lot a list is long but i will mention few for example one is magneto resistive sensors 
magnetoresistive sensors. Magnetoresistance is denoted by MR, and these are based on the principle of magnetoresistance, then magnetoresistance has different types depending upon how you measure, what is the magnitude. So we will, I will, for example, there is one is anomalous is there. There is giant magnetoresistance. There is colossal magnetoresistance C, it is C here. Then there is tunnel magnetoresistance. A lot of effects are there. We will not go into details of each one, but one of them we will study for understanding. There are then magnetorestrictive This will be based on magnetorestriction principle. Like you have piezoelectric effect in electri electricity or electronics or electrical effects, electricity, you have magnetorestriction effects like the uh, physical dimensions change. The physical dimensions of a magnetic material change. when placed in external magnetic field. External magnetic field. For example, if you have material, it has random uh, those domains. It has random domains. You apply some magnetic field, these domains will try to align themselves. Because of those alignments, the dimensions may be changed along a particular direction. Not in every direction, but along a particular direction. That is actually, it is magnetization axis. That is called as magnetization axis. Along the direction along which the dimensions will change because the, all these uh, domains will try to orient themselves in the direction of that applied field. Then there is one of the important and the common one that is Hall sensors or Hall transducers. You know that it is based on the Hall effect and it is called as galvanomagnet. Sorry. Both electric effects and the magnetic effects are, it is a galvanomagnet effect, which is used, which is principal, or simply the Hall effect. And one of the important one is another, that is circuits. These are the important one. These are the devices which measure small amounts of magnetic fields, that it is, superconducting quantum interference devices. You will learn more about this in fourth semester, I think, but still then here a brief uh, hint about this is that these work actually, these have a small, uh, the capability of these devices, these are actually the instruments which major small magnetic fields of the order of 10 to power minus 14 Tesla up to this much. Uh, not 14, 10 to power minus 10, I think. Yes, 10 to power minus 10 Tesla are very small. Or you can say that it is uh, up to 10 to power minus three or a state or the gas, very small magnetic moments, which we cannot detect by the ordinary instruments, ordinary, those uh, uh, susceptibility meters, susceptometers, which measure actually magnetic movements and uh, magnetic fields. And these are used for by the magnetic signal, or if a, you have some material, you want to measure its magnetic moment. But if it is magnetic moment is very low, you cannot measure by normal magnetometers but you have to measure it by this secret superconducting. These are superconducting, they work at superconducting transition temperatures. That means they need very low temperatures to operate. To operate, they need very low temperatures because at that time there will be no, those all the domains, all the magnetic moments will be aligned in a particular direction as there will be no scattering or no disturbance within the material. And quantum interference means that two wave functions of opposite 
nature they interfere with each other and you get a maximum signal this is a simple principle we will discuss it when we discuss the circuit separately i will give a uh, some time to it and it's based on that Messner effect or the Messner Oslo effect. Then there is nuclear magnetic resonance, NMR. This is another one. There is Brachiozoan sensors by magnetism and sound. A magnetism and acoustics are related to each other. Then there is a magneto optical sensors. Magneto optical means you apply, for example, MOOC. MOOC is a special effect actually. It is an effect. It is a uh, phenomena where you measure the magnetic moment by shining a polarized light. Polarized light means you only you polarize that incident light uh, wherein we only choose the magnetic vector of the electromagnetic wave. That Because uh, light wave, that laser or light, is an electromagnetic wave. So you choose only it is magnetic component. And that magnetic component has a magnetic moment. And that magnetic moment, for example, if this is a magnetic vector, it interacts with some material. It has magnetic domains here. Domains here. We have magnetic domains in this. These magnetic domains are magnetic moment, so it will interact with these. And because this is simply a magnetic field here, H or B, no, not H. It's a mu not H or a B, and it interacts with the magnetic moment of this sample. And it will try to align these, and you detect what is the change in this. In the output here is a detector or you can change directly the magnetic moment. You can change directly the magnet, you can measure the magnetic moment of this sample. So it is based on, it is a magnetic and optical conversion. You measure magnetic moment because the change of the input optical signal or the magnetic moment of the op this uh, photon or magnetic or moment of the optical signal which you shine on the material. So these are few, there are, this list is lot. So these are the, some of the main magnetic transducers are the sensors and we will start from a simple one or a basic one which is important already it is a magneto resistor magneto resistor sensors or transducers what are actually these uh, these are based on the principle of magneto resistance. Principle is MR, magneto resistance. Magneto resistance means change in resistance. Change in resistance under the influence of magnetic field for example if you have material any material you have we have material and it is for example it has some domains here magnet because whenever you apply magnetic field and you assume that by applying magnetic field there should be a change in the another property of a material or any physical property of a material it is important that there should be magnetic moments that means the sample or the material should be have a magnetic character if i assume that if i expect that or if we wish that we apply some magnetic field here in this material and this magnetic field will interact with this material only if this material has some magnetic moment mu because unless it is magnetic we cannot expect any interaction because it it needs to be some magnetic moment whether you it should be a for example a ferromagnetic or anti ferromagnetic and in these cases and when you apply magnetic moment a magnetic field these do well these domains orient themselves in the direction of the magnetic this magnetic field applied magnetic field there is a change in the resistance of the material and this effect is called as magneto resistance how the changes we will discuss it in the later part and we just define this mr in percentage it is resistivity which change in the absence of, in the presence of magnetic field minus resistivity without magnetic field 
divided by original resistance this row not if you you are calculating in percentage so you will multiply by 100 percent 100 percent is one actually and that means so the definition of magnitude resistance is that is the ratio actually a relative change in the resistance for example a material we have a material in the absence of magnetic field it has a resistance rho naught we apply some magnetic field since magnetic field will change its magnitude resistance or resistance simply resistance because if you apply, if you add resistance here in this it will be same expression because there are constant factors which are you know that uh, r is equal to rho into l by a when you mul when you take resistance ratios you are left with r because l by a will cancel out from the numerator and the denominator that is why we have only we can have the same expression whether you take r or you take rho so it is better to take rho in terms of rho we take the resistivity and if we apply magnetic field to a material having resistivity rho naught in the absence of field and it changes its resistance rho b so you take the subtraction this is a rho b so this in absence of magnetic field b and we take a ratio of that it is simply magnitude resistance by definition you can take units is up to you if you are your meter or ohm centimeter whatever the units are chosen you have to keep them same everywhere while deriving the calculation what actually happens in a magnitude resistance uh, before moving to that i will tell you that there are different effects of this magnitude resistance depending upon the change or the magnitude how much the resistance change resistance can change for example if you have a material so resistance can change for example its resistance can change up to a few percent few percent means uh, it has a five ohm magnitude resistance if it changes by 10 percent five that means 10 percent of the five so it will be something 5.5 ohms or uh, it can decrease and the resistance can also decrease because of the applying the magnetic it is not always possible that we can have an increased magnitude resistance it can be negative as well here uh, in this case so it is not important that uh, it is not necessary that you have a positive mr you can have a negative mr as well and we can draw a graph this is here rho h sorry and this is rho here where you can take or state gauss or tesla let us take its or state and it is ohm centimeter and if you have a semiconductor what is the behavior of the semiconductor uh, in uh, in the present uh, with at particular temperature and for example it has a resistance behavior for example, it goes like this. For example, it decreases at one field, at one temperature, and it's at particular temperature T. So it can decrease. It changed its behavior in the presence of this magnetic field. So its original resistance when H was zero was this, and its final value is this. So there is a change. There is a change in the resistance from zero to H or zero to b here it is in terms of b so let us take it in b because i have written it b here so there's a change how much is the change it is this much so from here to here there's a change in the resistance so it decreases it can increase as well so a few percent that's a normal anomaly that is a ordinary magnitude resistance omr ordinary magnitude resistance and there is then giant magneto resistance in this case the resistance change is about 200 percent so that means we can have a resistance which is a about 200 percent 200 times the original value 200 times the original value and number third is you have a tunneling magneto resistance this depends upon the phenomena because if you have two materials and you have one layer or you keep it another here 
a junction there's a transfer of charge carriers from here to here and there's a trans uh, there's a change in the resistance sorry this is not actually a battery sorry i have done it wrong you apply some magnetic field here and there's a transfer so the upon applying magnetic field the resistance changes while the charge carriers tunnel from one side to another side so that becomes tunneling magnetic resistance you have four anomalous anomalous changes actually by different under different conditions anomalous there is anisotropic magneto resistance this anisotropic magnetism means that for example you have a material it has you apply magnetic field in some particular direction this is b you find the change in resistance as of a few percent for example there is change mr i can write it as delta rho change in resistance delta rho or delta rho by rho not actually delta rho is that Initial man, final man's initial, so MR is delta man, so there is a percent. But if you apply in particular direction, if you apply in another direction, for example, you apply magnetic field in this direction, then you will find this change, magnetism. It is more change is more. That means MR increased or decrease it but the change is more either it is positive it can be negative we don't know exact value so that means in different direction you have different values of the resistance that becomes an isotropic actually so that's an isotropic magnetic resistance the one which we will focus here there are sensors which work on all the principles that means we can make sensors uh, based on all the principles which we have discussed here uh, different types of magnetic resistance but the one which we will discuss will be GMR, that is joint magnetic resistance. But there is a large change, about hundred and two hundred percent magnetic change in the resistance. So let us suppose I will take this GMR effect is observed, or uh, it is observed. In multi layers. What is multi layers? We have a thin layer of one material. We deposit or add another layer of the material here. Then we add again this one. Different, different. So here we have one. There may be more. It's not important that we have three or four layers. There will be many number of layers. 100, 50, 200. It depends what is your requirement actually. And for example, this is one layer. I will take simple example of two, three layers. And it's important that among these different layers, you should have a, if two, or if one is magnetic, other should be non-magnetic. If you have a magnetic, it should be separated by a non-magnetic. That means, let's take the example of simple structure. The simple structure is this is the simplest structure where you have three layers. And this is magnetic. I will write it as magnetic. It is ferromagnetic. This is ferromagnetic and this is non-magnetic. Non-magnetic. You can say it is a diamagnet or a metal, simply. A metal, non-magnetic metal. Okay. So this is simple arrangement of a GMR sensor or a GMR material where you can observe jet magneto resistance effect. And in this case, what happens? Why we take ferromagnet, ferromagnet, then a metal? are in non-magnetic the reason is that if it is a ferromagnetic for example this is ferromagnetic so it has a particular magnetic moment and when you apply some magnetic field when you apply some magnetic field or for example if 
there is some magnetic field, small magnetic field. It orients the magnetic moment in this direction. This is the magnetization direction. This is called magnetization direction. That means all the magnetic moments are in this direction. And this is separated by this and all the magnetic moments are separated direct they are directed along this direction that means when you apply some magnetic field here the, it aligns all the magnetic moments in its direction what will happen in this case if for example these all spins are up for example, what is magnetic moment actually it is a spin magnetic moment okay we are talking about the spin magnetic moment remember that we're not going into the details of orbital or those other magnetic moments. The main concern is that if it has a magnetic moment, which is because of the spins in it. So it is a spin magnetic moment. If it has all up spins, it is in the particular direction. It is in this direction. So that means you have one spin in this direction, 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 or one R uh, spins in this direction. In a particular direction so they will not be interacting with one another there will be no scattering with between these two spins so they will not be scattering so that means they can move easily in their own strips in their own materials or in their own degrees of freedom where they have to move because it needs a lot of energy if this spin has to be moved to here and it is not possible in a normal configuration in this case, in this case, it's not possible. So it has to move in this direction in the presence of magnetic field. So when they are aligned in the same direction, and they are aligning in the same direction, or if they are in the same direction, up or down, whatever it is. So that means there is low scattering, scattering is not much, and that means and their resistance is low. Resistance is low. Instead of that, if you have a same structure, but this, you have one direction in this case, one in this case, when you remove the magnetic field, for example, they have random directions and the net moment, magnetic moment becomes opposite to each other. As you decrease the intensity of that magnetic field, it becomes a high resistance. state. Because finally, resistance, uh, results because of that movement of those charge carriers and charge carriers are mostly electrons so electrons have a moment spin magnetic moment with them they are a charged particle they have their spin magnetic moment they, along with that charge the charge is there there's no effect on the charge what you manipulate or what you change or what you are playing with you are playing with the spin magnetic moment of that electron okay and that is why we are talking about this magnetic moment because magnetic moment has it will interact only when you have uh, the external magnetic field will interact only if you have a magnetic moment in the material and that magnetic moment here we are taking of those electrons that to their spin magnetic moment so those spins will be aligned in, if they are in the opposite direction that means they have a high resistance state so because they will not move the result will be up spin down spin the net magnetic moment will be zero so you don't have any magnetic moment in the material and that means the resistance will be high so this is how a resistance is changed or in another case if you take for example a simple bar in a hall effect so what hall effect does actually you apply a magnetic field it aligns it spreads those charge carriers in a particular uh, direction and there's a hall field that is how the hall sensor will work actually we will discuss that in the later part so it depends upon the alignment of those magnetic layers actually if they are layers up, they are aligned opposite to one another or in the same direction. And if it is a ferromagnetic material, you know that it has a spontaneous magnetic moment. We don't need external magnetic field for that at that time. We can have current because when the current flows through those materials, you need some small voltage, it drives the current from the head. And Current can flow in plane or current can flow perpendicular to plane. CIP, current in plane or perpendicular to plane. You can take current from like this. You can take current from this. This. So you can take from perpendicular direction in the current or in the same plane. 
and sensors are actually they have the same principle so you take you have, you measure that movement magnetic movement at a particular interval of time uh, and they will move when they are parallel they will not move there's a resistance maximum resistance at when they are anti parallel to each other now how it is designed is actually what what is the mr i have given you the sent to you know i have sent the notes and you can see there if there is a these are the different layers i have already told you there may be number of layers there is a different one of the layers is this this is the another one it's a different uh, nature uh, this layer is of different nature then you have this one and these are different actually structures there is this is uh, if you have that note with you you can see it on that structure and there is a gmr active region is between this you have a ferromagnetic layer here you have this is the electrode actually substrate or the electrode this is substrate substrate is on which we are deposit actually and it acts as an electrode and this is a ferromagnetic layer here this is another ferromagnetic layer here this this region this is another ferromagnetic layer and there's a direction in this case and you can manipulate the direction of this ferromagnetic layer here you can change its direction and i will tell you why there is this arrow and what is the difference between these two arrows and okay i think we have one minute please sign in again when it is disconnected sign in again and uh, this is the gmr active region this is only gmr active region this this is separated by a metal this non magnetic layer this are uh, gmr active region and this is in here on the top of it here it is an anti ferromagnetic layer and then this is the top electrode this is the top electrode uh, the air difference between this arrow this uh this arrow is that uh, this is a special type of structure it is called spin value structure or adjacent soft layer structure sorry it's not a spin value it's a soft layer structure what is done actually this 